Differential equations, we're in chapter 6, 6.1, day 3. We're going to look at ordinary points and also singular points. So given that we have a second order differential equation, uh, a sub 2 of x, a sub 1 of x, and a sub 0 of x are coefficients of y double prime, y prime, and y respectively. Uh, if you divide by a sub 2, of course, you'd have a lead coefficient of just a 1 here. Uh, what we're going to see is that here's a definition. A point or a x value, x sub 0, is said to be an ordinary point if both p of x and q of x are analytic at x naught or x sub 0. And that means, what it means to be analytic, means that they can be both P and Q can be represented, represented by a power series centered at X naught. And a point that's not an ordinary point is said to be a singular point of the differential equation. So let's just take a look uh, very quickly uh, right here. We've got uh, Y double prime plus E to the X plus Y prime plus sine of X, Y x equals 0 is what we would call an ordinary point because both e to the x and sine of x are analytic at this point. Both of them have very famous power series centered at x equals 0. Of course those are power series you should have memorized in Calc BC. Uh, but look sometimes kids will say I get it you, you can't have uh, anything with a x in a denominator uh, but Look, here is, here's a great example where actually you can. Uh, next example right here, given that uh, x double prime plus sine of xy equals 0, when you divide by x, you will get sine of x all over x, which is actually analytic at x equals 0. x equals 0 is an ordinary point. Now this can seem to be far-fetched. You might say, I don't think you can write a power series like that. Actually, we can. Look, if, if we were to remember that the sine of x is an odd function. Here's one of those very, very famous uh, Maclaurin series that you memorized in, in Calc BC. Then when you divide by x, uh, each one of these, look, I'm going to divide by x right here. For each one of these, you'd be left with 1 all over x squared all over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th all over 5 factorial. And uh, it would continue on. The bottom line is this. You do have a, a power series centered at x equals 0. Uh, so that means that you do have an ordinary point. Uh, however, if you looked at the natural log of x, if you look at the natural log of x, uh, this would not have a power series in x at x equals 0. Uh, you know, deciding, and, and this is the key, this is really the key that we're focusing in on, at least on this part of the lesson, deciding if a point is ordinary or singular is very, very important. Uh, we're going to see later on in this chapter that uh, we're going to have different methods uh, of, of solving your differential equation depending on whether you have ordinary or singular uh, points. Um, so yeah, it will determine how you solve the differential equation. It can be very difficult to do for some coefficients p and q, p of x and q of x, but it's relatively easy when the coefficients are polynomials. And that's really what we're going to take a look at today. Let's just say that you have uh, you know, this differential equation, a sub 2 of x, a sub 1 of x, a sub 0 of x are your uh, coefficients, coefficient functions if you would, and they are all polynomials. Also they have no common factors. At least we're going to start off with that. Then x sub 0, x naught, is an ordinary point if this lead coefficient, when you substitute that x value in, is not 0, then it's ordinary. 
and it will be singular if it is zero. So actually, we're going to see that if we are, in essence, if we're dividing by a sub 2 of x, if you are dividing by zero with these polynomials uh, with no common factors, that will lead to a singular point. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at just a few uh, quick examples. Let's just see right here. We're just looking at that lead coefficient function x squared minus 1. That's really our p of x, isn't it? Well, a sub 2 of x, pardon me. It's our a sub 2 of x. And, uh, you know, as we would solve that, we'd say, you know what, we're going to have singular points when that's equal to 0. And this would factor into x plus 1, x minus 1. And I think you could see quickly that x could equal negative 1 or x could equal positive 1. What does it mean? It means that we have singular points at x equals plus or minus 1. All other points are regular. So we can take a look at this next example right here. And now our a sub 2 of x is a little more complicated. It's x squared plus 1. You could say, hey, that doesn't factor. Uh, certainly not over the reals. Uh, but uh, we could solve. We could subtract a 1. We can take our square roots. And it will not take you long to see plus or minus i. So if we were solving over the complex numbers, we'd see that we'd have singular points at these imaginary numbers. All other points are regular. And finally, if we looked at this very, very special type of differential equation that we've talked about so much in the past, the Cauchy-Euler. Uh, take a look at your p2 of x right now. You could say, well, wow, we've got ax squared. Uh, and, and again, Cauchy-Euler says the power of x matches the degree of the derivative. In front of y double prime, second derivative, we have x squared and so forth. Well, I think you're going to see quickly if you solved here, you'd get x equals 0. So x equals 0 would be a singular point. All other points are regular. So that's kind of nice and quick for us to, to do this. And, uh, you know, we're going to be able to uh, very quickly take a look at a very powerful theorem here. If x equals x naught is an ordinary point, and that's the key. Today we're going to do an example in our notes here where we are solving an ordinary point. There are always two linearly independent solutions each in the form of a power series centered at x uh, naught, at, at that ordinary point. You can call those two solutions y1 of x and y2 of x. Those will be two different power series. And then the general solution would be a linear combination thereof, c1y1 plus c2y2. So uh, we're going to jump on in and do one example together. And for this example, it's looking amazingly close to what we did before. We're just getting a lot more practice uh, solving differential equations with a series. You can see already we don't have to worry about singular points. You know, our uh, coefficient of y double prime is a 1. That's never going to equal 0. Uh, so, uh, we're going to get a solution. Let's center it at zero. Let's assume that we've got a power series 
centered at zero. That can help you out so much. It's the easiest power series. Y prime, well, we saw this even in Calc BC. Our counter is going to go to n equals 1 because we lose that constant. And likewise, we're about to lose the next constant. Look, if you plugged in n equals 1, you wouldn't have anything with an x in it. And, uh, you know, it would only take you a moment to take this derivative. And then we're going to substitute this all in and see where we go. Here's our y double prime. And y double prime, well, we're going to have n equals 2 up to infinity. We'll have c sub n times n times n minus 1 times x to the n minus 2. That's what we just wrote right there. Then we'll have x squared. But our y, you can see that's really what we had right up here. We'll have from n equals 0 up to infinity of c sub n x to the n. And, uh, you know, leave your first sigma where it is. I think that's actually some nice, friendly good news. Our second sigma, however, we're going to distribute this in. And this is where we just add our powers together. We'll have c sub n. This is x to the n plus 2. Now, what should be pretty evident as we're looking here is, uh, you know, our powers of x are very different. We'd like to make some friendly substitutions, some friendly organizations, reorganizations here so that they will have the same power. And if x does have the same power, we're going to be able to join uh, all of our coefficients together, and that's really going to help us out quite a bit. Now, by the way, as we're looking here with this first substitution, if we were to solve for n, of course, that would be k plus 2. Uh, but look what happens as we go ahead and start putting this in order. Our counter at n equals 2, well, if k is equal to n minus 2, 2 minus 2 is 0. So we have k equals 0. Infinity, whether n is uh, going to infinity, well, then k is going to infinity also. This would be c sub n. But look, we solve for n up here. That's going to be c sub k plus 2. Here's our n right here. That's going to be k plus 2. n minus 1 is one step lower than that. So what's one step lower than k plus 2? Well, it's k plus 1, isn't it? And then uh, our new power here, the n minus 2, is just going to be a k. So look at that. We now have a sigma with x to the k. The second sigma, thankfully, is quite a bit easier easier, isn't it? Uh, you know, if n equaled 0, then k would, of course, equal 2. And, uh, you know, n would be k minus 2 with this substitution. So we'd have c sub k minus 2. And then we'll have x raised up to the k power. So things have gotten way, way, way better. They're way better in the sense that now I've got x to the k for both of these series. However, you're going to notice that your counter isn't the same. So, look, when that happens, plug in a 0 in here. Plug in that 0, you'd get c sub 2, and 0 plus 2 is just a 2, 0 plus 1 is just a 1, so that's going to be a 2. And x to the 0 is just a, a 1. Now plug in a 1. Well, you'd get up in here, 1 plus 2 is a 3. 1 plus 1 is a 2. And 2 times 3 is a 6. Uh, 1 plus 2 in that subscript is a 3. And then we'll have x to the 1. And uh, 
now you can stop and say, look, I plugged in k equals 0. I plugged in k equals 1.